Just for simplicity, I'm going to assume that there are no always takers in the population, that we only have never takers and compliers. That means that over here in the control group, we don't have this first group. There are no always takers. Everybody is either never taker or complier. And over here in the treatment group, in this part, we also don't have any always takers. So that means that we know these people are compliers, and we know these people are never takers. But the problem is, over here in the control group, we don't know whether these people are never takers or compliers. So let's see how we get the local average treatment effect. Well, remember how it's defined. The local average treatment effect is the difference between the average potential outcome of compliers when they do receive treatment minus the average potential outcome for compliers when they don't receive treatment, which I've written here. Okay, it's just the difference of those two averages for compliers. The out potential outcome when they receive treatment minus the potential outcome when they don't. Now this first number, the average potential outcome for compliers when they do receive treatment, we learn directly from the data. We just go over here to our treatment group, and because there are no always takers, we know that these people are compliers, and they receive treatment. So we look at the average outcome, say in the Oregon healthcare experiment, the average cholesterol for the people in the treatment group who got treated. That's going to tell us the average potential outcome for compliers when they get treated. That's the first part we need to compute late. The next part is a little more complicated. If we went over here to the control group and we looked at the average outcome, the average cholesterol, for these people, if there were no never takers, we'd be done. That would be that second thing we needed to know. That's exactly what happens in a randomized experiment when there's perfect compliance, when there are no never takers. The problem is the average cholesterol for this group of people is a mixture of two averages. It's the mixture of the outcomes for compliers and the outcomes for the never takers. But we only care about the compliers here. So these never takers are a problem. How are we going to deal with that? Well, over here, I've written out an equation that describes that mixture. So on the left-hand side of this equation, I wrote the average outcome, say the average cholesterol, in the control group. That means the average of these people. Okay, remember, we're assuming there are no always takers, so these people aren't here. This is everybody in the control group. So the average of this outcome is going to be an average of the never takers and the compliers. So the average outcome in the control group equals the average potential outcome for the compliers when they don't receive treatment, okay, because nobody here receives treatment. That's what we want to know. Multiplied by the proportion of the compli compliers in our population plus the average outcome for the never takers when they don't receive treatment multiplied by the proportion of never takers. So this is the number we want to know. If we can get that, we're done. This number here on the left-hand side, we get directly from our data. We just take the average outcome in the control group. This number here, the proportion of compliers, that we can get directly from our data in the treatment group. Because over here, we see some people are treated, and we know that they're compliers. Some people are not treated, and we know that they're never takers. So we just look at what percentage of people in our assigned to treatment group are actually getting treatment. That's the percentage of compliers in the data, assuming that there are no always takers. And remember, it's really important that this is a random sample of people. So that percentage reflects the true proportion of compliers in our population and also reflects the proportion of compliers over here in the control group because of random sampling and random assignment to treatment and random assignment to control. So we know the proportion of compliers. Similarly, we also know the proportion of never takers because assuming that only pe people are either compliers or never takers, if I know how many compliers there are, I also know how many never takers there are. So finally, what about this number? The average potential outcome for never takers when they don't receive treatment. Well, that I can get by looking at my assigned to treatment group and then looking at the average outcome for these people. 
the people who don't get treated. Now, why is that? Well, this is a group of never takers. It's a random sample from the population, and they don't get treated. So the outcome I see, their cholesterol, is equal to their potential outcome when they don't get treated. So this average is exactly the average potential outcome for never takers when they're not treated. And that number is precisely this number here. So remember, the local average treatment effect is this number, the average outcome for compliers when they do receive treatment, minus this number, the average potential outcome for compliers when they don't receive treatment. And in this, I've got this equation here where I've just shown that this number here on the left-hand side is known from our data, this number here is known from our data, this number is known from our data, and this number is known from our data. Only this number is unknown. But now we just have one equation and one unknown, and we can solve for this number here. And therefore, we solve this equation, get this, subtract it from that, and that gives us the local average treatment effect.